It's time now for Word Alive from the Upper Room in Gatesville, North Carolina, with Pastor Eric Earhart. Join us in seeing lives changed by the power of God's Word. You're invited to join us in person on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at 807 Main Street in Gatesville, North Carolina. You can also listen to our live audio podcast at www.ustream.com. And now, today's message. out here than we normally do. We had nine people off to school. You know, Pastor Eric's out preaching, and things went well. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say thank you. And just encourage everybody, sometimes we get an expected response of what we think should happen. That we're going to see, you know, just people fall on the ground and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, forgive me. And maybe you've seen it, maybe you didn't yesterday, but know this, that there was a seed planted, that there were lives touched. (laughs) Amen. And it might not be to next month, to next year, to 10 years, but we're going to believe that those seeds were planted in good ground, and we're going to see a good fruit produced from that. So just, again, want to thank everybody. I mean, everybody, it was a little warm. Everybody just worked hard. Everything went together, went down together well. And, I mean, it was just a blessing. And just be encouraged that your labor was not in vain. Amen. Hi, (laughs) y'all. Y'all like that? (laughs) Uh, I won't hear yesterday. I, I uh, I wasn't skipping out. Uh, I've, I've been, I, I just want to say I know what y'all had to go through to, to do this uh, giveaway. I've been a part of them, and I was praying for y'all. I've been praying for it, been praying for the giveaway. I want to follow up what Brother Chuck said. I believe that God's seeds were planted and that the fruit's going to come forth. And we may not see it immediately, but down the road, God is at work behind the scenes. It's like he said, nobody may have... Uh, uh, got on their knees yesterday and cried out to the Lord, what must I do to be saved? But uh, God was at work, and he's in control. Um, it's like the guy said yesterday, I believe he said, uh, talking about that uh, yesterday, he said, uh, uh, what did he call himself? A uh, planner, what, I forgot, Sister Carolyn. Remember he said, we're talking about the tribulation. He said, well, I don't, he said, I just believe God's in control when everything's going to the plan. <laughs> but amen, uh, God's in control, and he's, uh, uh, Working and uh, um, like I say, I just I was a lot of prayers went forth and that's what that's what matters and uh, and uh, so anyway, praise be to the Lord for what He's doing, uh, what He's going to do and uh, um, uh, uh, Amen. No question, the Lord is in control. It was a blessing for me yesterday to walk into Children's Sanctuary and I went in there three different times. And I watched some of the people come out the door and had my ear tuned to what they were saying. And a lot of them were saying, gosh, this stuff is just like brand new. This stuff is number one. So I needed this here. To, God, I said, bless. It was something else in there I wanted. I got to get this to the car and come back. But, you know, that's what the giveaway is about, to give so the people can receive that that little, that that, pay a pants to that guy or that knickknack. I saw one person had a knickknack yesterday that was praising the Lord over it. And that's what you that, that's what a giveaway is about. You see that blessing. And when that blessing is given and they and they realize it's a blessing, you can believe that's the seed that's planted. Somebody bought that knickknack here for that person. They have seen it all all they needed to see it. They were probably afraid of it when they bought it, but it has come less distracted to them, and they said, I'm just going to give it away. And, you know, and it's a blessing to know pe- that people are willing to share, because that's what Jesus says. You know, you all remember the story that said, you fed me, and you clothed me, and, and you gave me something to drink, and the, the people said, well, when did I do it? When did I do it? Because they didn't remember it. That's what we done yesterday. We fed people, we clothed them, and we give them the blessing that they needed. And that's just a blessing. Now, we are 
we do this here, what, twice a year? And the people are looking forward to it. I mean, the people that are here yesterday, they, they'll be back this fall, you know, and they'll receive another blessing, and that blessing will grow and grow and grow until one day they're going to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I see it. Thank you. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce our speaker today, Brother Dave T.J. Y'all come, y'all come on up here. You know, I had the privilege last night of going out and exercising with these two men. So, stay out there. We exercised our elbow and jaw bones. But we really talked about the Lord. It was a blessing event to get to know these two people and to see that they are dedicated to the word of the Lord and they are shepherds of the Lord. You know, we are all are brothers. And uh, I'm, it's my privilege to call them brothers. But I love each one of y'all, and I can call y'all brothers and sisters too. But I find out last night that we have one special brother indeed. And you know, uh, I know him. These two people know him, and most of y'all know him, so I hope all y'all do. His name is Jesus. Yeah. And I learned last night that these two brothers really loved him. They talked to him. They listened to him. But they also listened to his Heavenly Father, which is their Heavenly Father, too. So without much more say to do, I, I just want to present Brother David Norris and T.J., now, I don't, I don't know if both of them speaking or not. It don't make no difference to me. Whatever the Lord leads, brother, that's what we do here. We're just open. And I know you got a message from the Lord, so be blessed. Amen. You want to greet the people, TJ? Let's build a TJ. Thank you, thank you. I'm just excited to be here. I really feel the love in this uh, church. And I think the outreach program is great. You're reaching the community. You're touching lives and souls who need Jesus in their life. And um, I really feel the spirit here. You're blessed to be in a place like this. A lot of churches don't have that feeling you have. You leave here every day. And take that with you and impart that. You know, use that, as a, use that in knowing that where you came from, God's touched you here today. And go plant a seed. Amen. Amen. Is this working okay? Can everyone hear me all right with this mic? Are we good? Do this one instead. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm trapped by a cord today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Pastor David. I'm from City Church in Bloomington, Indiana, the Hoosier land. And uh, no one shouted me down on that, but we're Hoosiers. And um, it's good to be here in the state of North Carolina. And, and thank you so much for your hospitality. I want to thank Pastor Eric and his wife and his kids for having me, the elders, for hosting. Last night, Brother George took us to George's restaurant. And then we had a special of the Georgia Steak special. So it was all about George last night. We had a great time. And, um, and I'm just glad that the rapture didn't happen. I have a wife at home. Um, her name is Summer. She's a beautiful uh, uh, woman and wife to me. And we have three sons. Our oldest is three. Our second is almost 24 months. And our third is four months. And... <clears throat> didn't plan it that way, but the Lord just worked it out that way. And I'm asking the Lord to slow it down a little bit. Hallelujah. And, uh, but I'm glad the rapture didn't happen. I want to go back. I want to see him a little bit. And um, it's just good to be here. And it's good to see diversity. Our church back home, half of our church is, is not, you know, Caucasian. We have different nations and nationalities. Me and my wife are biracially married. And uh, I just think it's great that people come together. Because Jesus said that around the throne was every tribe, nation, and tongue. So let's not wait till we get to heaven to do that. Let's do it right now. Amen. And uh, so it's so good to see that here today. And I just want to honor you and honor the Lord in this place. Uh, I talked to Pastor Eric about me coming. And he, he asked me to come. And I asked him what he felt for the church and where he felt like the, uh, the Lord was taking you folks. And so I, I prayed about that, and I feel like I have a, a message from the Lord for you today. 
And then uh, I'm not going to be long, but I want to minister to a few of you that I prayed about, and the Lord showed me some things last night. How many believe that the Lord can show us things to come? And that's in the, in the Gospel of John. The Holy Spirit can show us things to come. Jesus said in John chapter 5 that everything he did, he saw his Father do it first. So we can you know, be in the Spirit and see things. And, and I believe he showed me some things. I want to minister to you today as such. Let's turn our Bibles to the Gospel of Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. If you don't have a Bible, get your iPhone out and get your phone Bible out. If you don't have your phone Bible out, get your, I don't know, iPod or something. If you don't have that, just look on your neighbors. Or look on the screen, yeah. Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. I think this, this story has a, lot of, um, has a lot of great nuggets from heaven. And this is about ten lepers that came to Jesus for healing. And I want to tie this in some, with some revelation thoughts here today for us to apply to each one of you. And then I want to speak over the church. I believe the church is going into new depths and new levels. Amen? Amen? Our job, ladies and gentlemen, no matter if you feel you're a saint or you ain't, no matter if you feel like you're qualified or unqualified, you're educated or uneducated, if you come to Jesus and Jesus touches your life, every one of us can do something for him. And if we've received grace and mercy, which we have, I didn't always deserve it. How about you? But he gave it to me. Then we need to do the same and give that away. Remember, the greatest miracle is someone coming to Jesus. And uh, I think one of the others said that Gatesville is 300 people, correct? Am I correct on that? And so each one of those people is somebody to Jesus. Each person in this county is somebody to Jesus. And until every one of them know Jesus, we have a job to do. And that's why it's important that we want churches to grow. We want things to happen because it means more people know him. And so I want to sow this thought into your spirit. There. Let's, uh, Luke 17, verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. You may want to circle the, uh, the word Samaria and Galilee if you have a, a pen or pencil. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. You want to circle that in your Bible. Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet, thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You may want to circle that in your Bible if you can. Your faith has made you well. So, Father, we, th we just thank you for this great church. Thank you for Pastor Eric, his wife, his five children. Thank you, Lord, for the elders, every saint, every team member as, um, that's a part of the Upper Room Fellowship. We just thank you for them today. We're honored to be here today, Lord. Holy Spirit, come through me. Speak through me. Let people hear your voice and know you in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Everyone said amen. amen. So I want to just break down a few points here, and then I want to just kind of prophesy what I feel over the church. Is that okay today? Amen. And uh, notice first here in this story, and we could go into some Jewish customs and laws, but for, for sake of time, I'm not going to do that today. But I want to uh, focus on the first point that he was on his way to Jerusalem, and he traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And if you know anything about Bible history, especially in the Gospel era, in Jesus' period of time, the, the racial tension between the Jewish people and the Samaritans was uh, very tense, very dramatic. Jewish people viewed them as not even being you know, worthy. They called them dogs. They could not fellowship with them. They could not really be with them. But what I love about Jesus is Jesus constantly defied the status quo. He constantly defied the social norm that wasn't uh, uh, according to his heart. And even when, a, fair, uh, when a, a woman outside of the covenant came to Jesus and asked for help for her daughter, he said, it's not good to cast bread to the dogs. And she said, but the bread eats the, or the dogs um, eat the crumbs. And he still loved her and gave her what she needed. What I feel today, and I think it's important for all of us to have a healthy remembrance of 
not remembering in a, in a sense of praise of what we used to do and thinking back to the good old days when we did this and this. But it is important that every one of us in this room, if you're a Christ follower, to remember where you came from and to have a healthy respect that God has brought you out of somewhere. And not to be religious and think that you weren't that because you once were that. And then Jesus came and rescued you out of that and made you something different. Now the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, Add to your faith virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. But if you lack any of these things, it's because you're short-sighted and you have forgotten what you were forgiven of. Now, in this text, in this first point, Jesus went to the people. He was, he, he was even in the region. I love the fact that Jesus was, he walked even to the region of people that he shouldn't have been around. And I'm glad that Jesus did this in this story, and I'm glad he did it in my life because he went to places he shouldn't have gone to get to me. Come on, you can talk, me, I mean, you can talk back if you want to today. He went to places that maybe were not religious, but he went there to get me. And he went there to get you. And the Samaritans were outsiders. They were considered dirty. We were once outsiders. We were once dirty. But Jesus came and went to us and got us right where we were and brought us to where we are today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot be judgmental. We cannot be judgmental. We cannot be full of hypocrisy. We need to have the love and the grace of God that we have been given. We need to give that to other people. If we've been forgiven, we need to forgive. If we've been given grace, we need to give grace. If we've been shown mercy, we show mercy. Amen. And I think it's important to understand there's a healthy parameter of knowing that I was once over here. I once did these things. I once was involved in this, but Jesus came in my life and he got me where I was and he changed me. And so my heart of praise is based on who he is and that he loved me when I wasn't lovable. And he rescued me when I was dirty. Now, if you want to write some, th uh, some thoughts down, write this down. Jesus is never embarrassed of you. Jesus is never embarrassed of you. In fact, Jesus is never embarrassed of your past sin. He's not embarrassed of your, cur of your current mistake. You know how sometimes we get embarrassed of our, I mean, of our kids or, or of someone around us? One time I was in, I don't know if you have Bob Evans down here. We have Bob Evans up in Indiana. And uh, my wife and I write Bob Evans, and my oldest son, I'm at home, I wrestle with it. Every time I come in the house, they want to wrestle. It's three boys, man. We're just, we're going at it. And so I'm throwing them on the bed and doing like dinosaur. And so my son walks up to this other table, and they have a little son. He walks up to him, and he goes, Ugh. I'm just like, I'm going to whip this boy, get over here. And he does it again. Ugh. I was in, in myself, I was embarrassed. I was like, oh man, I'm embarrassed, man. This family's gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> and the thing about it is, though, Jesus never gets embarrassed of us. As a matter of fact, our dirt that we bring to Jesus, we can't even get Jesus dirty. You can bring whatever you can to Jesus, and you'll never stain his garment. He will wash you wider than a launder soap can wash you and clean you. So I'm saying this point because I think it's important that in the Old Testament and in the New, it's interesting how people that were outside of the covenant, people that weren't in the Jewish family, continually saw Jesus, received Jesus, and got what Jesus had for them. Because they weren't looking through a religious view or you owe me. They came to him as, I just need you, here I am, take me, I'm yours. Big difference. Let us come to Jesus today with a heart of worship. I just need Jesus because he's Jesus. He doesn't owe me anything. If he wants to give me something, I receive it. But I just love him because he died and he made a way for me to come to him. Is this helping somebody today? Now, he was in this area. He was going to a village. Ten men that had leprosy. That's a modern equivalent of our AIDS. Now, AIDS has been, uh, you know, helped immensely since the 80s and the early 90s. But this would be equivalent to that. It was a scourge disease, and it was, it was something that was, a, it was very fearful. In parts of India today, there's still leprosy. 
And they're still colonized on their own. These ten, these ten men were you know, out there by themselves. They were dying. Leprosy literally ate off. It ate the flesh, and fingers would fall off. Ears would fall off. You know, body parts would fall off, and there was a slow death. It was a horrendous thing. And so they called out to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go share yourself to the priest. That was a Jewish custom. And as they went, they were healed. Now notice this. Only one came back and worshipped and thanked God for what God had done. Now, this is a good point here. Many church people and people that aren't even Christ followers come to God in desperation. Think back real quick when you first came to Jesus. Most of us came to Jesus because we were in a bad state. We were at the end of our rope. Most of us did not come to Jesus when we had a million dollars in our bank, had a, had a beautiful Cadillac, had nice clothes, had nice makeup, had a nice shaved head like me, and where everything was going good, had a beach house and a, and a farmhouse. And all, no, we came to him. We were desperate at the end of our line. When we do that, how many have been blessed by God and God has raised you up and blessed you since you first came to him? But here's the... And that needs to be, but here's the temptation. My dad's a pastor. I was a PK. For a while, I was a demon. And then Jesus came and saved me. I had a, a drug habit, had a sexual addiction to women in high school, and God came and saved my life and cleansed me. Seven of my friends have, have died of drug overdose. One was shot. And I, 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 count it, I count it a privilege that I'm alive today. Now, here's the thing. We can come to Jesus in those positions, and Jesus will pick us up, and he'll bless us. But here's the challenge. When he blesses us, will we stay, or will we leave? It's not a matter of if God bless you. I'm telling you, everyone in this room today, whether you feel worthy or not, God will bless you. He said in Proverbs 3, when he increases you. Not if, he's going to increase you, but your test will be when he blesses you and answers a few of your prayers, what are you going to do, back out, or are you going to get stronger in God? These ten men got what they wanted, but only one of them had the audacity to come back and say, Jesus, thank you. Because my blessing doesn't mean I leave God. My blessing means I worship you stronger because you answered my prayer. And I challenge every one of you in this room, if you're struggling with, you know, some prayers that you want answered or, or you want, you know, some things to get higher maybe or, or some promotion in your life, you can't just, you know, be like an ATM machine and say, you know, well, Lord, I receive it, now I'm leaving. We need to receive it and stay. Amen. When he blesses you, sit down on a proverbial seat and say, Lord, I'm yours. Take my life. I give it to you. Not, well, thank you for giving me that. Now I'm going to go do what I want to do again. And then when I am down again, I'll come back and then do it over and over again. No, let's have a continual incline of worship to God. And as he blesses us more and more, we get closer and closer to him. That's the process of God. Amen. And notice, as I put here, that worship takes us somewhere. It's important that we worship the Lord. Now, I'm going to challenge you. Your worship is going to be based on who God is, not what God has done. And I don't know if, if any of you have gotten to these points before, but, man, you'll praise. Man, God did this. He did that. He woke me up. Man, he answered this prayer. He did all this stuff. And then worship is... You know, I have five prayers that are still aren't answered. I got situations that haven't changed one bit, but I'm getting up today, and I'm lifting up my hands, and I'm telling you, Jesus, I love you because you're God. That's worship. It's not based on what he's done. It's based on who he is. And there's so many references in the Bible, particularly one that sticks out to me that probably you all know of is, is, is David. When he, he sinned with Bathsheba, she conceives and he has this baby and he fasts seven days. And his baby is born and his baby dies. And the Bible says specifically that when the news came to him that the baby died, he got up, washed his face, and he didn't storm out and say, I hate God. He didn't storm out and say, well, God don't answer my prayers. Then storm out and say, well, it didn't work for me. Then storm out and say, well, why does God pick on me? He went into the temple and he worshiped. Hallelujah. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not doom gloom, but I'm going to tell you this. You're going to come to a point in your walk with God where things ain't going right. And your prayers aren't being answered like this. And you're not getting everything you want when you want it. 
It's not Burger King. It's going to be, you know, you know, King of Kings or something. I don't know. It's not going to be fast. And you're going to, it's going to feel like that it's harder to serve God than it is to go back into the world. It's easier for me to go back to my own stuff than to keep on going. And what are you going to do when you get in those places? I encourage everybody to worship. Stay in your position and worship God for who He is and fall in love with His person. And come to the realization that if God doesn't give me one more thing, I'm still going to love Him. Amen. Amen. Now, how many have felt like you already have been there or you're there right now? What I'm just talking about. You're worshiping and it's difficult to worship. Those that didn't raise your hands, you will get to that point. And if you have already been to that point and you're out of that point, you'll get to that point again. It's the process of our relationship with God. You're never going to get out of it. We're going to get to a point. There's going to be seasons where He blesses us. There's seasons where He breaks us. And there's seasons where He gives us. And then after he gives us, he's going to bless us. He's going to break us. And he'll give us. And it will start all over again. And it's going to keep on doing it because none of us are ever going to reach a plateau where I got it. That's not true. In fact, I know the old, you know, the old Pentecost people said, well, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, yeah, you know, I received the Holy Spirit, but I didn't figure him out. I got a long way to go. And just one experience doesn't mean I got everything I need. I mean, this is a process of time, isn't it? Hope this is helping you today. So, he loves outsiders. One came back and worshipped. When we receive, we stay. We don't receive and leave. And we bless them more. Now, notice this. The one guy that came back, Jesus asked in verse 17, you know, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Interesting, Jesus, Jesus called out the fact that he wasn't even a part of the family of God. It's interesting, it's a shame that people that don't even know Christ have more gratefulness at times than people that know Christ. And it should not be that way. Praise and the right attitude and, and joy and, and the right spirit need to be on our lips. Now this is the main point that I want to get to. He said, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Wait a minute, PD. They call me PD back home, I'm sorry. You know, Pastor Dave, PD. Uh, I was like, PD, I'm just kidding. Let me, go, let me go on. That was a bad joke. Father, forgive me. I come back in the spirit. All right. Notice that he was already healed earlier in the text. Wasn't he already healed? That's why he came back and worshiped in the first place. He was already healed of leprosy. But now Jesus is saying that faith has made you whole. Now, if you study this, and I encourage you to study that, I, this is how I preach every Sunday. I preach from the Scripture. I take Scripture, I write down the Scripture. I think it needs to be made simple and easy for everyone to understand. It's not rocket scientist, right? Come on, let's get really easy with it. Now, so I encourage you to study on your own, but if you study this on your own, when you see this word whole or well, in the Greek it means that it was actually a recovery or a restoration. So the first time when he said, Jesus, Master, you know, you know, cleanse us, Jesus did it when they turned and went to the priest. The leprosy left their skin. But one man came back and worshipped, and when Jesus said, Thy faith has made you whole, if he was missing a pinky finger, the pinky finger came back. That's what he means. If he was missing an ear, the ear came back. He was made whole again. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you getting this? Okay, now... What I believe the Holy Spirit has dealt with me about in my personal life... And what we encourage our church is this. We can receive healing and blessing from God. That's again, folks, it's not hard. He said when he blesses us, when he increases us, when he answers your prayer. In fact, he said in John 16 that he would answer your prayer that your joy may be filled. So God's going to do that. The issue, though, is this. Just like this man came back and he worshipped, and we're going to have seasons where our worship is going to be challenged because it's going to be difficult for us to worship at the point that we're at. As we break through that, though, now, now please hear me, we're going to allow God to go deeper in us, and it's not just the cleansing of healing. It's going into us, and Jesus is making us whole. 
Now, today, no one in this room has leprosy that I know of. If you do, we're going to pray for it, and God's going to heal you. But I don't think anyone has leprosy here. So our fingers aren't missing. Our physical body isn't being eaten away. But everyone in this room has gone through a thing called life. And how many of that life isn't easy and life's not fair? And family hurts us. People hurt us. Situations are difficult. There's things that every single one of us have come through. In fact, one out of four Americans are molested right now in our country. That means in this room today, several of you have been molested. That's just, that's just sheer numbers. There's things that have happened to us that maybe we didn't even deserve. And the issue is, now please hear what I'm saying. I can receive blessings from God, but will I let Jesus go deeper in me and make me whole? If I had a, if, if I had a, if I had a dresser up here, a chest of drawers, it would be a perfect analogy of this. And all of us, I think, have that in our house. In our room, probably particularly, you have a top drawer, usually for undergarments and socks. Second drawer is for t-shirts. Fourth drawer is for jeans. Last drawer is for like sweaters or sweatshirts and stuff. Am I, am I close to what you do? Okay. And so it, like, it, gets, it gets deeper in our clothing as we go down. Now, all of us, if you're a Christ follower, this top drawer has been covered. Jesus has come in and then we got it. And the baby's praising God, God, I just said it. So she got it too. So the first drawer is covered. Okay? But now, am I going to worship God, easy or difficult, and allow him to go in the second drawer of my heart? In the third drawer of my heart? In the fourth drawer? I'm talking about down where I have recesses of fear buried in my spirit. Areas of racism that I got buried down, I was taught wrong as a child, and I got issues in, in the deepest part of me. Well, I let God go in there and take it out. Well, I let God go in there and take out jealousy, or take out envy, or take out anger, or take out, you know, lust, or take out this, I mean, the secret things of my life. Well, I let Jesus go in and make me whole. And I'm challenging you all today is don't settle for the surface stuff. Go allow God to go deeper in us and make us whole. And, and, and when I say this, you don't have to do that to go to heaven. You can receive Jesus and be saved and have a whole lot of issues, and he's washed you and cleansed you, and you're going to go to heaven. But we're going to live a miserable life. And we're not going to be as effective or fruitful for him as we could be if we don't allow him to make us whole. So that in this room... Now, I don't know why I'm saying this, but, but in this room today, if you are jealous of someone else, you won't be jealous because you're not intimidated anymore because God's made you whole. And some of you today, don't be offended when I say this, but the reality is there's lust in this room right now because out of the percentage of people in this room, there's several of us that are probably tempted to be on porn. Maybe some of us are dealing with these you know, things. What are we going to do about it? Hide them in the dark? Play a game with God? God knows it all, folks. Are we going to let God go down in and take it out? So that we don't look at our sisters in a lustful way or, or anybody. We're looking at them as Christ sees them. See, worship takes us somewhere. True worship takes us to a point that our lives get clean before God. And we're living a life that's not perfect, that's not reality, but it's a life of excellence for him. Because Booker T. Washington said excellence is doing things in an uncommon way. So if I do the simple things in an uncommon way, the Father can begin to use me and my, and my life mirrors what he has for me. Is, is this making sense today? Now, I believe this one man represents the upper room church. I believe this man represents this church and that God has touched you and he's healed you and he's done things in your life and you're here today because you love God. Maybe you're invited by a family member or a friend and you're, and you're a guest today, but, but God is leading us here. And I believe the Lord is making this church a church of worship, not just to be a church of worship for worship's sake, but to be a church of worship to first honor Him, because this man gave glory to where glory was due. And the second part of that is we get made whole. Now, Pastor Eric was talking to me about how he's raising up several of you as leaders for life groups. And he's raising up people in this church to be a team. 
And I want to challenge you right now. Uh, our church has grown immensely. We, you know, uh, we have three services, and, and we, you know, went from this point to this point, and we're getting ready to build on this, and, and that's exciting, but man, that, kinda, that takes challenges, and you're going to be challenged, and why is it important that we grow? Because we want more people to know Jesus, Amen. and don't ever say that, well, God doesn't count. That's not true. God counts the hairs in our head. He counts the sheep. He counts the sparrows, and he knows everyone by name, and then he has a book in the Bible called Numbers. And that's religion. That's an excuse of why our churches aren't effective when we say that nonsense. God knows every person in this city, in this town, and he wants every one of them to know him. Amen. And he's waiting for the church of his name to go out and get them. Not to make excuses why they're not here. Smile at me. I'm a nice guy. And so you're going to have challenges. And as Brother Eric, or as Pastor Eric, you know, as he encouraged me with, what, with where you're at, I felt this for you today, that several of you, the Holy Spirit is wanting to go deeper in you. Thank God you're baptized in the Spirit. Thank God he's in you, man. That, that's all great. But I'm challenging every one of you to allow God to go deeper and make you a more whole person so that you can be a better leader. And you're a better leader first in your own home. You're a better husband. You're a better wife. You're a better father. You're a better mother. If you're single, you're just preparing yourself for being married. And you start there. Then you come into the house of God and you allow the Holy Spirit to empower you to be the leader He's called you to be. Amen. Don't ever underestimate the power of someone greeting at the door. Someone helping in the parking lot. Someone changing dirty diapers. Someone up here singing. Someone in the things we're doing sound. All this has meaning. And every single one of you have a purpose in this church. And as we come together... The power of God is manifested in Gatesville, North Carolina, and in the surrounding area. And Jesus' light can shine because we're allowing him to go deeper in us, and he's making us whole. But folks, churches, man, they get some of the wildest people you've ever seen. When I was in Bible school, they, they, uh, one of our teachers told us of a church that split. They had a church split, excuse me, over this point. They split... Because half the church did not think that Adam had a belly button, and the other half thought he did have a belly button. That's a shame. What keeps me relevant is not my Android phone, or it's not my MacBook computer. What keeps me relevant is I remember where I was. I remember what I was doing. I remember who I did it with. And I went to their funerals. And for us to sit in a building and us four no more and debate on topics that have no relevance or heaven or hell is a grievance to God. Quite frankly, don't be offended when I say this. It doesn't matter if people you know, pray in tongues or not. I can help them pray in tongues because I do it. But it doesn't matter if they do it or not. That's not, the, that's not the full picture. It's a picture. It's not the full picture. But I help them get filled with the Spirit, and we do at our church. Whether Jesus comes pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, folks, I don't care. When he comes, I'm going. I'm going. And I want you to go too. Whether the earth is 7,000 years old or millions of years old, we know that God made it. I don't really care. I just know it looks great outside. And thank God for the sun because it gives me a brown head in the summertime. Just thank God for it. it. Tit for tat doesn't mean anything. What matters is that my heart is given to God and that Jesus is coming into my heart. He's changing my life. Therefore, I'm shining for him. Where I'm at, how I can do it. Now, notice this. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me about this church. As you allow Christ to heal you and make you whole, you are going to have recovery and restoration in your own life of what's been taken. See, those men had body parts missing. It was taken. But Jesus made that one man whole. Everything he got back. When you allow God to make you whole, you see, what, what begins to happen is the Holy Spirit can bring things back into your life and restore things to you. And, brother... 
you know, Pastor Eric told me about this area and what is going on in this area in the natural. And I believe that recovery and restoration is needed in this whole, in this whole you know, county. And when you allow God to make you whole and you allow God to make you more of a complete person, you're going to possess that anointing and you can release that anointing on this community in this town and other people can come and receive the wholeness that God has for them. I'm talking about recovery. I'm talking about restoration. I'm talking about a loss of hope. God's going to give hope. A loss of family. God's going to give them their family back. A loss of finance, God can give it back. A loss of health, God can give it back. God can restore and bring back everything that's been taken. And this church, I believe, is being called by God to go up to a higher plateau. Not necessarily maybe in hours that we sing or in the hours we pray, but in letting God go deeper into our heart. Now, PD, how do I do that? It's a great question. Here's how you do it. And every single one of us in this room have areas in our life that the Holy Spirit is wanting to have in our lives. Don't ever think, well, that's not me. (laughs) No, it is you, and it is me. That's why we're in a process with God. So, for example, if um, if you have an area of fear in your life, you're petrified of different things, what you do is you take it to God and you say, God, you locate. First off, you face reality. If you have fear, don't say, I don't have fear. I have faith. I have fear. That's not, no, you do have fear. That's not faith. Faith says, I look to the mountain, and I say to the mountain, be there. In other words, I face what I'm looking at, I address what I'm looking at, and then I command it to go. Don't ever bury your head in the sand and say, it's faith. That's denial. That's church science stuff. That's not, that's not the word of God. I address what I have. If I have fear, I say, Father, I'm dealing with fear in this area. I'm addressing this fear, and Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm dealing with it, but Father, I give this fear to you, Lord, please heal me. That's how you give it to him. You say, well, PD, he knows it exactly, but he's waiting on us to give it to him. And when you give it to him, there's a power in that that releases you from the bonds that you're bound in. At City Church, here's what I say, if you hide in your secrecy, you'll die. If you hide, you die. If you get in the light, you're going to live. you got to get in the light. Now, that's not only with God, but that's, yes, it is with God, and you get real with God, but it's also with an accountability partner. And you release things that you have to release, and you get it in the light so that God can begin to heal you of the darkness. Is this helping you today? Remember, my aunt, uh, my aunt passed away. Of, uh, of cancer. It was a really hard thing to our family. My dad got saved in his family. He was 16 and 50 members of our family have come to Christ. We've got a household salvation. And I believe that can happen for your family. And my aunt was a great she was a dance, the dance team leader in our church. She had five kids. The youngest was in sixth grade. Um, my uncle was on staff at that time. And I remember being in the office that day. I remember him calling the doctor, to, I mean, to following up on the test. And the cancer had reoccurred again. And unfortunately, she passed away. We, you know, we believed God. We, you know, we were releasing our faith for healing, and she's, in, and she's in glory today. And I have to address, at times, a fear of bad news because I was there, and it's imprinted in my brain. I saw the bad news come to my uncle. But I can't just ignore it and say, well, the Holy Spirit, I mean, the Spirit of God is going to take care of it. No, he's taking care of it by me addressing it and giving it to him. That's how he takes care of it. If you have a lust problem today, you address it and say, Father, I have a lust problem. I give it to you. Lord, come in to this area of my heart. I give this to you. That's how you do that, church. If you have other issues and you're jealous or, you're, or you feel inferior or you feel, you know, some of you are mad at God. And but you feel bad about me and mad at God. And, and I've gotten mad at God. Don't look at me that way. I'm sure some of you have too. But what do you do with that anger? The Bible says be angry and sin not. So here's what you do. You just go to God and say, God, I'm angry right now about this, this, and this. I don't understand it. I'm not sure about it. But I'm giving you my anger and I worship you. See, that's, that's, guys, that's real. That's not inside I'm hateful and I'm, I'm jealous and I'm lusting. And, but Father, I praise you. Woo, glory. No, no, let me get real about it. Because God sees it all anyway. Let's get God down past the brain, down to my heart, down to my deepest, most being, and pull up the junk so that I can be free. And I'm prophesying to this church. 
that God wants to give you an anointing of recovery and restoration for your personal lives, but for this town and for this county and for this region. And the Holy Spirit will restore and cause you to recover personally things that have been taken and issues that have been ripped out of your heart. God's going to restore that back to you. But when He does restore it, we are to release that same presence, that same anointing out to other people that we know and don't know because we have received it, therefore we give it. The Holy Spirit said, new levels as a church. You write this down if you want, or I think they're recording it. New levels as a church in your unity. As you come together in wholeness, and you, and you come together and you let God go deeper in you as a, as a people, the, he, the Holy Spirit's going to bring you in unity. I don't have time to go through all that, but Psalms 133, unity releases the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be in unity. You know, I heard Bishop Jakes, he's my first cousin in Dallas, Texas. Two of you got that, never mind. But anyway, he said a great point. He said... There's nowhere in the scripture where any devils fight with each other. Think about this. There's no reference in scripture where any demons are battling each other over a person or that the kingdom of hell is in discord at any time. They're in order, they're organized, and they're moving demonically. But the craziest discord and uprising happens with the children of light. Because... The enemy of darkness knows if he can get us in disarray, then his organization can take control. But if we come together in unity, he knows the anointing comes on us and the power of God sets us free and sets others free. In your marriages, come together in unity. Don't allow discord. In fact, as a matter, in the, in the book of Judges chapter 6, when God raised up Gideon, the Midianites, if you read that story, the Midianites caused a great poverty to come on the people of Israel. And that word Midianite means divided, division. So the, the enemy's plot is to bring division, to bring poverty. We come together in unity, the blessing of God comes on us. He said new levels and trust. Trust each other more. Trust each other more. We're the family of God. And trust takes time. Don't ever expect trust to be automatic. Trust takes time. You've got to trust and you've got to go through things and you've got to go to new levels of trust. God says new levels of purpose. He wants to give this church new levels of purpose and focus of what you're doing. You're going to hit the mark. You're going to hit the bullseye. You're going to, every day, every Sunday, every week, you're going to hit the mark of what God is going to do in your life and you're going to see Jesus get the glory for it. Is this feeding your spirit today? So the anointing, remember worship, he worshiped, the one worshiped, he was made whole. Recovery, restoration, the Holy Spirit's given this church anointing of recovery and restoration. He's asking you as a church to come to higher levels in your unity. Support Pastor Eric and his wife. Be a part of a vision greater than yourself. Anybody can do anything on their own, but it will never be great. It takes a team. Be a part of the team here. Well, I'm the star. No, Jesus, Jesus is the star. Amen. We're in a different ball game. We're not in, we're not on the Miami Heat. I mean, I mean, this is Jesus. He's the star. You come together, you be faithful where you're at, and God will promote you and lead you as you feel. Or as he feels, excuse me. Come together in your trust. Communicate with each other. Communicate with each other. Don't hold things in your heart. I don't have time to go into that, but Matthew chapter 18 and 16 talks about how to handle conflict. Don't gossip. Don't do triangle conversations. In other words, I'm mad at you, so I go to you and tell you about her. That's not, that's not, that's not Bible. But as adults, we do it all the time. In fact, I'm going to do a series at our church called Junior High. And I'm going to talk about junior high activities and how we as adults still act out junior high-ish. I'm even going to get new edition and play their music during the service. That's when I was in junior high, candy girl and telephone man. I want everyone to hear it. Because we still act out. And we don't trust each other because we're not communicating when we need to communicate. And communication doesn't mean always division if I'm doing it in the right way and I'm sharing maybe a different thought. But we need to trust each other more. The Holy Spirit's saying to trust each other more and have good or purpose, communicate. Let the Holy Spirit release this church to new levels as leaders. And he's got a great congregation today. Greatness is in you. I said greatness is in you. But greatness is always with a team. 
I said, greatness is always in a team. It's never with an individual. If you're a sports you know, fan here today, Michael Jordan, was, he, was, he was outstanding, but he wasn't great by himself. He had other people with him. And what's interesting, you know, that the managers on those NBA teams or the last guy on the bench who never gets playing time, when they get a championship, guess what he gets? He gets that ring. And then go to his family and say, look what I got. And they say, but you never played. Don't matter. I got the ring. Be a team. Receive recovery. Receive restoration. Come together in unity. Come together in trust. Come together in purpose. And let the Holy Spirit do His work. Amen. Do you receive this this morning? Is this a word of your, into your spirit? <laughs> raise your hands to heaven as you're seated. You don't have to stand. Just, just stay seated. Just raise your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit, shine your light into our hearts today. As the book of Proverbs says, that the spirit of man searcheth the inward part of the man. Lord, let us receive the transparency of the Holy Spirit. We cast off our pride and our ego. Reveal reality to us. And then we, re and then we address the reality through the power of your word, and, and that reality changes. I speak a new level at Upper Room of unity in this church. Of trust. Trusting each other as a team. Trusting Pastor Eric and his wife and their children. Trust back and forth. A new level of purpose. And the greatness that you have for this church takes place and your glory is manifested in Jesus' name. Now even as you're... Even as you're seated with your hands raised, just go and open up your mouth if you could and just tell God why you love him today. We worship Jesus. We don't worship to be heard, but we need to be heard worshiping. We worship, Father. We worship you, Father. We praise your name. We honor your name. King of kings, Lord of lords, there is none like you in the heavens or in the earth. Move in our lives. Reveal the secret things and let us be brave to allow you to make us whole. I speak anger to sweep out of our spirit this morning. Amen. I speak fear to leave us this morning. Amen. I speak anger and racism and lust and perversion, jealousy, envy, strife to flee our inner man today. Tormenting thoughts to leave addiction, addictive behavior. I feel some of you have addictive behaviors and the power of God is going to break it off in Jesus' name. Set you free from addictive behaviors. Let the power of God sweep in this room and touch every person today by His power and by His glory. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm going to be done in just a few moments, but I just want to pray. Can I pray over a few people here as the Lord show me? And what I believe the Lord is going to do is when we, he, he touches one and He touches all. And the Lord told me about seven years ago that when His gifts would operate, and some of you may not believe this, but that's all right. I mean, we don't have to you just met me, so I understand. Uh, so I hope you trust me to the level that you know me. I value people's trust. But the Holy Spirit showed me that when the gifts of God would begin to operate, that His presence would come in the room and, and be over the people. And everyone would be touched by His presence that would receive it. And God can do that, can He? He can come in the form of clouds and, and, and glory. Now, here's what I'm going to be doing. John 5, 19 and 20, Jesus said, I do nothing unless I see my Father do it. So in other words, what happened is Jesus saw the woman at the well before he got to the well. Does that make sense? Jesus saw blind Bartimaeus before he walked by blind Bartimaeus. Because he saw it already, then he just acted out what he saw. So I prayed, Holy Spirit, show me a few things. And the Lord showed me that to my right, and I can write that, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean those of you that maybe want to see confirmation, you can come up here after service and see how I wrote it last night. Nice little printing that I wrote down on, on this piece of paper. A mother on the third row to my right is going to be touched by God tomorrow morning. Well, here's my right, and here's one, two, three, and there's a mother holding a child. So I believe the Lord knows, doesn't he? This is not psyche. This is the Holy Spirit. This is a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Can I pray for you and your family? Is that okay? Go ahead and stand to your feet. The word of the Lord. Bless you. Bless you.
Go ahead and raise your hands to heaven. The word of the Lord was to me last night that he was going to bring healing in this family. He's going to bring restoration in this family. And he's going to bring hope in this family. And I see a mother where you have stood in the gap and you've prayed and, I, and you've worshipped. Even when I preached on today, you've done it. I, I, I see in the spirit where you've done what I've said. You've, you've worshipped when it was difficult. You've given when it was difficult. But you've held your faith. And God's moving in your life even today. He's answering prayers. I believe there's healing emotionally, but also I think there's healing physically. And I'm not sure if one of the children, but I'm saying the healing power of God is going to flow to the top of your head, to the soles of your feet, and every child in your house is going to be healed. And your family's going to have the, the touch of Jesus on it. Sir, I feel the power of God giving you strength today. Where you've been serving God, you're walking in, your, in His fullness to the best of your ability. But I see like where Paul was... Remember how Paul had a thorn in his side and he was buffeted by spirit. You had times you get buffeted and you, and you kind of get down, but then you get up and you get down and you get up. And the Holy Spirit's going to give you just like a supernatural strength to bust through it. No more getting down and getting, you're going to be staying up. You're going to walk with God. You're going to be on his path. And blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits in the, ski, in the seat of the scornful. I don't know why I'm saying this to you, but the Holy Spirit has given you a supernatural separation from every situation that is negative and even evil. You're going to have a supernatural separation and God separates you unto his service, mighty man of God. You feel that going through you? That's the power of God. This is, not, this is the power of the Lord today. Now, mother, raise your hand to heaven. I'm going to pray for you. Is this true what I'm saying to you? Everything true what I'm saying to you today? I don't know you, but Jesus knows you. And he knows your house. He knows your address. And he sees you worshiping. And I just see in the vision, as the Lord can show us things in visions, I see you going through the house singing and praising God. I see you in the kitchen worshiping and praising God. And, you're, and you have praise on your lips. And the Lord loves that. And he's receiving that. And he's coming to you because of your heart and your worship. Father, we release the anointing of the Holy Spirit on her today. We think that your power and your might, and the weapon formed against them shall prosper. The plan and the purpose of God, the healing, the restoration, and the hope to come on her and fill her in Jesus' name. Whew. You feel that on you? That's Jesus right there. Now, I, I just feel this. Your body, even though you look healthy and strong, your body has suffered at times bouts of temporary things that come and go, like pain comes and goes, issues in your stomach area, things that bother you. True what I'm saying to you? And, you, and you've been nervous about it. You've been scared. You've even thought, I even hear the Lord say you thought that it was cancer. Look, I mean, Lord, am I dealing with tumors? Am I dealing? It's not that. But the Spirit of God is going to go in today and heal you, and it's never going to return. Do you believe that today? Now, is that true what I'm saying to you? You even thought that thought, didn't you? But what God reveals, he heals. Go on, put your hand on your stomach. Why don't you hold the baby, uh, Dad, if you can. Come up a little closer so I don't fall off the stage. I don't want to fall off and knock you down. Everyone stretch your hands toward this precious woman. We release the power of God on her. The healing virtue of Jesus go in her spirit, go through her, from the top of her to the soles of her feet. Fear, we command you to go. But we know that you're moving in her life. In Jesus' name. I just feel God just flowing right into this woman today. This is powerful. God's flowing into you. Jesus. Your legs to be strengthened as well. Your feet to be strengthened as well. At times you have tension and swelling. God releases that today. One of your knees tends to give you trouble. That goes in Jesus' name as well. Hallelujah. You get the whole thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You feel Jesus touch you today? Yeah. Go and just raise your hands and just receive the presence of God today at the altar. Excellent job. The Lord moves today. This is your day. This is your word. God has done it. Come on. We've got to praise today. Welcome. Ma'am, who led the worship? You want to come up here for, for me? Raise your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit, show me a family re represented on, on the front row that had an anointing in the home. Your family's going to be used of God. Do you have children in a family? In the book of Acts, chapter 21, Philip's house had four virgin daughters that prophesied. The whole house was used to God. And if you study church history, Eusebius wrote about them. And those four daughters were very instrumental in the early church. Your family is going to be supernatural. And your children are going to have anointings of God in their life. Now, I see where well, that's been a battle 
even recently, just kind of like a battle at times in your own spirit, and, and you believe in God, seeing God's plan for your family and, and some of your kids. But it's going to happen in Jesus' name, okay? And the, and the Spirit of God is going to be like a corraler. He's going to corral them back to Him. There's going to be a fresh strength and unity. And every one of your seed is going to be used of God, and you're going to be used of God. Your house is going to be an anointed house. Come a little closer. I'm going to lay hands on you. Now, I don't know if you've been praying for that, but I'm telling you, what, He knows you. He knows what you're praying for. So what God reveals, He heals. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Heal, restore, bring back to faith, bring back to you. In Jesus' name. Now, I have no idea who you are. I didn't even talk to you before the service or anything. But I just see, I don't know if it's from your extended family, or even maybe from your immediate family, any type of disbelief or mocking, it's broken today. And there's going to be a receiving that God is real. This is real. And they're going to be humble at the presence of God. We come against that spirit right now. No more mocking, disbelief. We come against it. We ask you to touch these people today and move on this woman. Touch her. Let her ever be whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Give God praise for your own family. Thank you, Father. Let's stand to our feet today and let's go ready to praise the Lord. One of the elders here in the blue shirt, what was your name again, sir? Anyone and behind you? John, I'm sorry, I didn't mean your name. I'm not sure what type of work you're in. I don't know if you have your own business or you're employed or what you do, but I saw business blessings on you. And I saw the Lord open up doors for you and give you increase and give you influence. I don't know what that means for you because I didn't really get what you do or what, how that applies to you, but I know the Lord's going to open up doors for you. And there's going to be opportunities for you to have influence for Christ and increase in your natural life as well. Do you receive that? Is that true what I'm saying or, or, or makes sense to you? Go ahead and raise both hands to heaven, please, elder. God bless him today. Let it be real. Let it be true. Let everything you say come to pass. Let your glory touch him and move in his life in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for it. The piano player, you're in the back. Can you play something on the piano for me? Just, just let, something sweet. I would sing, but then I'd break the spirit, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Lady in the back on the end in the uh, greenish shirt, there on the end, last row, raise your hands to heaven. God sets you free of, uh, at times, fear, um, at times, uh, uh, even physical headaches and pain in your head and your neck and your back, shoulders area. The Lord sets you free today in Jesus' name Hallelujah. of stress and tension. Hallelujah. And I see where you had an, inju uh, you had an injury. A time and it kind of messed up your back area and it's uh, caused you problems off and on. Sleeping has been difficult at times. It, but just stress and tension. Lord sets you free today and gives you peace. Is that true what I'm saying to you, ma'am? Does that make sense to you? Why don't you come on down to the front and I'll pray with you here real quick. God, what God reveals, He heals in Jesus' name. Raise your hands to heaven. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit, when I lay hand on you today, what God's going to do, He's going to give you a miracle in your bone structure down your spine. Does that make sense to you today? He's going to heal you. And he's going to touch you. Now, I don't know you, do I? But Jesus does. So be encouraged today that he understands your suffering. Father, in Jesus' name. Even right there, even before I touch you, God's doing it right there. If you let on you, that's the presence of God right there. Just let it go right through your body. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We let Jesus' work come forth and come through you in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus breathed in John 21. The Bible said Jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Remember that? healing to you in Jesus' name. And I feel that on you. <laughs> feel that on you? Just keep on receiving that. That's the power of God. Ma'am, in the pretty white necklace and the white like sweater, nice earrings and glasses, we're going to raise your hands to heaven. The Spirit of God touches your body today and gives you rejuvenation of energy and strength. The Spirit of God has given you a, a a desire of prayer intercession, but also I believe prophecy is in your spirit and dreams and visions. God wants to visit you and, and, and visit your home. You are spiritually anointed by God. Allow Jesus to do it in this day at new levels and new dimensions of your spirit. Allow him to come through you by seeing where God has answered prayers and God has moved on your family, but that's going to new dimensions right now in your life 
and the Spirit of God is going to use you to prophesy. And you even had desires to be used in the gifts and be used by God. And the Lord says you're going to do it. You're going to be released in it. And you're going to see fruit in it in Jesus' name. Is that true what I'm saying to you, ma'am? Yes. And I see God going down your right side. I see the angel of the Lord standing next to you going down your right side, touching your hip, down to your knee, down to your foot. And I see God right now doing reconstructive uh, surgery and repair to that side of your body. And you're going to have no pain, no swelling, and any type of injury is being restored to you and being healed right now in Jesus' name. Does that make sense what I'm saying to you? Does that make sense what I'm saying to you, ma'am? That's Jesus. I see in the vision. God's doing it right now. Let's raise our hands to heaven. How many would say PD today? I see a lot of things right now in the spirit. But I know you got a wedding today. It's important that we get married today. Who's getting married today? Who is it? Who is it? Not here yet? Okay. Well, just say, I, I, I bless this new family. Amen. And Jesus comes in their home and uses them in a powerful way. But how many say PD today? I want God to recover and restore things in my life. I want to be a worshiper when things aren't easy, when things are good. I want God to grow me to new levels of unity, trust, and purpose in this church. Raise your hand if that's you today. God bless you today. Out loud, everyone say, and you know, in fact, let's do this. Let's come down to the altar. If you feel that, come to the altar right now as a church, as a church family, come to the altar. I'm almost out of your way. I don't want to keep you. But how many feel the anointing here? The presence of God's here today. Now, at the time of God, what you felt is going to come to pass for both of you. Now, there's a ministry in you. And there's a flow of God. You both have felt this and you've prayed about this together. Isn't this true? And, um, I just see you like praying together in your house, sitting at a table, talking about it, praying about it, getting thoughts of God. Even I don't know if you write things down, but I just see like processing what God has said. You're doing good. I feel like you're in the timing of God, what you're doing here. Just be faithful, be consistent. The gift's going to make room for you, and God's going to open up doors. But as you honor the pastor here, like we know, you know we should do, it's going to happen for you. But I see that in your spirit. In Jesus' name, go ahead and raise your hands to heaven. Will the anointing of the Holy Spirit come on them? Well, it's already on them. But I just uh, give them direction. And as they uh, support this fellowship, the power of God just grows in them and moves in them what you did for Pastor Eric and his wife. You, you do for them at the right time and the right measure and the right, yes, Jesus. And I feel at, at times a temptation of heaviness and at times a sadness. And the Lord lifts that off you today. a sense of maybe being unworthy or what's wrong with me or what's wrong at, even at times with my body the Lord relieves that off you today thank you Jesus thank you Jesus healing to you today in Jesus name thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus glory to you Now, I see the bad report. I see it. You understand what I'm saying to you? I see in the vision what you've been told, what you feel is happening to you. But the Bible says, whose report are we going to believe? Now, we don't defy the report you've gotten because that may be true from a certain perspective. But remember, the highest reality is God's reality. Does that make sense to you? And I'm telling you, right now, look at my eyes. The Holy Spirit is going to go into your body and heal you in Jesus' name. See that? Come on up to the front. Ushers, please help her just in case. Raise your hands to heaven today if you can. In Jesus' name. His name is above every name. Every na Any name named is, is under Jesus. That's right. So when I pray for you today, I'm believing. It's not me. All the gifts do is just give you faith that God's hearing you. That's all this does. And it builds everyone's faith. So, so, so I'm not special. I mean, anyone can do this. I'm telling you, Jesus is going to touch your life today. In Jesus' name. I speak healing power from the top right of the soles of her feet. Boost her and come out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that's pulling God's... Now just keep on standing there. And it's, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit showed me that. He's healing you right now in Jesus' name. It's great. Hope this helps you today. Hope this you know, encourages you today. God bless you today. 
I will. We'll do that. I'm going to pray for the whole church first, so just hold on a second. Go and grab your neighbor's hand because we're a family, we're a team. Young lady, are you in college? High school, you're going to be in college. Right? It's good. You need to go. And God's going to give you open, open doors at college. Do you have any idea of what you want to do and what you want to study at? Okay. The Holy Spirit, as you, you need to strive for excellence on your, at high school right now, and I'm sure you do. So let's go for 4.0. If you, if you don't got it, let's strive for it. Okay? I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's going to open up doors for you and creative ideas and the bills going to come out of your spirit. But you need to give it to God like you're doing. You need to open up doors, but, I'm, but I saw the Spirit of God come on your head. And there's going to be open avenues, but you just need to give it to God and give those talents to God, and you'll have open favor. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Receive it now in Jesus' name. If I had more time, I'd do everyone, but I can't. So I'm, you know, so I'm sorry, but the Holy Spirit knows, doesn't he? And he's going to do great things in this church. Any palpitations you have in your chest, or any, any situations with your heart, I don't, I don't know if you know that, the lady behind you in the beautiful purple, yeah. Any situation, I don't know, irregular heart, something, God's touching your heart physically and spiritually today in Jesus' name. And you're going to be strong on your body. Does that make sense? Strong on your spirit? I don't know if you have any diagnosis, but I just saw that in the vision that God's going to heal you today. Is that true? So I don't know if it's palpitations or irregular heartbeat, but the Lord heals you today. Just know he heals you. What he reveals. In fact, can Brother TJ pray for you real quick? Is that okay? Go and lay hands on her, brother, and the Lord's going to heal her today. Now, everyone here at the altar, as we're, as we're holding hands, let's hold them up together. Now, the presence of God, what we're feeling is the presence of God. And Jesus is real. Angels are here. Jesus is here. Everyone say, Lord Jesus. I give you my heart. Take me completely. I'm yours. Make me whole. Give me strength to worship you. In good times, and in, and in tough times. I receive, I receive restoration, restoration and recovery, and recovery to, my to my life. In my church, in my church I, receive I receive the calling, the calling to, be to be a part of the team in greater unity, greater, greater trust, greater purpose. Anoint us for this area and beyond. In Jesus' name. Now let's raise our hands free of one another and just thank God for this today. Personally today. Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful job playing. Thank you for doing that. Keep on going. It's a little bit longer. Real quick, everyone put your hand on your stomach. I'm doing this so no one feels alienated. Any ladies in here, so your hands are already there. Everyone's hands are there, so don't feel awkward. Any ladies that are dealing with issues in your body, and I felt the anointing today of any ladies that want children. The Lord heals your body today in Jesus' name. Your bodies are being healed right now in Jesus' name. And there's being a fixing right now. I'm telling you, God's fixing several women in this church right now in Jesus' name. Receive that. I just feel that today. Several of you have, uh, I know she's talking about your husband. I'm going to pray for you. But I feel any foot problems with other people today. Uh, I'm not praying for the one lady, any, any person that has headaches or chronic pain. The Lord heals you today as well. Just receive that in Jesus' name right now. He just touches you and heals you in Jesus' name. And uh, this gentleman right here, I don't know, but... God's going to give you a supply of finance. I don't know if you need work, but he's going to give you work. Okay? You're going to get it work. You're going to get work. It's going to happen for you. Do you work for somebody? Do you have your own business or something? Well, he's going to give you work. I just speak, raise your hand. I just speak uncommon favor. People see your sign. They get your number. And when you ask him how this happened, you say, I don't even know how I got your number, but I just got your number. 
I speak business come to you in Jesus' name. You believe that? I got to quit. We'll go all day here. I'm gonna, in Jesus' name, let business come to him. Finances come to his house. Caught off on all of his bills. More than enough. And he gives God praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. You're a great people. You're a great church. I want to encourage you to stay together. Do it for the team. Do it for Jesus. As Jesus has touched you, come together as a team. So this place is packed out to the back wall. And then you got to build again. Or maybe you go to two services or something. But do it as a team. Let's get more white people black people, mixed people, all types of people in here. That's God's heart, man. That's God's heart. And let Jesus do it. Amen. You're a great people. Understand you're a great people. And God has greatness for you. I want to thank the pastor's wife. God bless you today. And your kids. Yeah, come on up. This is your church. Tell me to get down if you want. Give her a hand. Great, great pastor's wife. Great woman. I want to just say, how long have you been in town? I don't even know. <laughs> okay. When did you get here? You got here Friday. Okay. We do not have a pictorial directory like some churches do. And Eric is gone. Who, who have you spent time with? Okay. Pastor Alex. Okay. If you are skeptic about this going on, I want to say to you, I know, I know about some of this. And Wednesday night we had a conversation, a very short conversation, about what was going on in her body. And he didn't know about that. And this family I know about this because we have conversations at home and if you're here today and you're thinking oh they kind of coached him they they told him I was going on so he could pretend and I've seen this on TV before and I think you know these people are just fake I don't know about the TV situations, but I know this has been real. And I can tell anybody here, because I have talked to some of these people, and my husband has told me about his conversations with some of you. If you're on the kind of the fringes of this this morning you can believe it he doesn't know what these people look like before we didn't tell him but the Holy Spirit knows them and he knows all of us the nice thing is the, the comforting thing is that he loves us so even though he knows us he still loves us and he knows that I was unkind to my two-year-old this morning when she was throwing a fit. I didn't just correct her. I was unkind to her. And he still loves me, and I'm thankful for that. And whatever is going on with you, he still loves you. Stop doing that, but he still loves you. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm that for you and for anybody that was just kind of skeptical. Don't be skeptical. It's real. It's really real. Thank you all for having me. Please pray we have a safe travel back home. I'll, I'll pray for him. Uh, bless my wife and my three sons. When you think of us, when you think of City Church in Bloomington, Indiana, just thank you that, you know, for your prayers as our building new campaign is off. We need to build a, build, build a new building. 
And um, I appreciate your prayers for us. It's a walk of faith. And as you're walking in faith, we're walking in faith. Amen. So, Brother George, you're going to come up and dismiss? You know, after meeting Brother Dave last night, I knew that today was going to be a special day. I just, from after talking to him for the last four or five minutes, you could tell that he was anointed, that he loved the Lord, and, uh, and I knew that he had a message for this church today. So I'm, I'm just proud to have met him in person. Been in his father's presence when he was down here. And that's a gracious family doing the work of, of God. So it, you, be, you are blessed today because you are standing in this room. Not because of this building. You are standing, you are standing in the presence of God today. I just want to say one quick thing. Uh, this was a word of the Lord. And I know some of you got a word of the Lord. But today, this was a word of the Lord. While we were in praise and worship, I almost felt like the Lord wanted me to stop. Maybe he did. And just have prayer. And he started talking about those secret things. That's what the Lord started saying. There's secret things we have buried. And the Lord wants you to deal with them. He wants you to get ready. You heard the word come from him. And it sounds like, well, you're just piggybacking. I'm telling you what the Lord was already speaking. The Spirit's always in unity. So we're not going to have time to pray, but this is what I'm asking each and every one of you to do, is inquire of the Lord and say, Lord, what is it? And then it ain't no good if it's hidden. Find someone and confess it to. The Bible says confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. So we're not going to have a prayer time because what I was thinking was have everybody come up and just listen. Don't, we're not playing games. Be real. If, you, if you're not willing to confess it, you're not ready to get rid of it. You're ready to just keep it because you love it. So I'm just saying right now, the word of the Lord came forth through our brother and what he preached and saying there's secret things. There's things you're holding on to and the Lord wants to free you. So please find someone, inquire of the Lord, confess it, and be healed that you may be whole. Amen. Amen. Each and every one of us in this room have been touched today. Now it's your turn to touch the messenger. The messenger spent a lot of time and miles getting here to bring us the message. Send him home with your blessings and make it green. Thank you very much. That, just let me say for just one moment, we all bless. So I ask the blessing of the Lord on each person stand here that they will have mercy, that they will receive, receive love from the Lord, that they will be able to receive it and get in the light of the Lord. I pray there, Lord, that each one has safe travel and that each one become friendly and friendly and just look for the word of the Lord. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. Thank you. God bless you.